Alright, we're still out in the boiler room here. This is going to be an addendum uh, video to the nozzle replacement video that I just posted. One of my subscribers, Dan Think Logical, uh, left a comment. He expressed disappointment that I didn't actually show how to set the electrodes or the points as he calls them. I did flash a uh, uh, shot of the manual after he left the first comment, uh, but that doesn't really cut it. It doesn't show you how to set them, so I'm going to do that. I believe these are all set because I did set them six months ago, and usually you would do this maintenance you know, every year. Um, there's another reason why I didn't uh, include that in the original video, and that's because, and I mentioned this in the first video, YouTube is holding us accountable for watch time percentage. So I'm trying to keep my videos on the shorter side, and I bet all the DIY uh, video YouTubers out there um, are doing the same thing. Because you know, if this video ends up being 20 minutes long and somebody only watches you know, three minutes of it, you get a 15% watch time percentage as opposed to a 10 minute video and they're still only going to watch the three minutes so you get a 30% uh, watch time percentage so that's not a good excuse to cut corners so if I'm leaving things out or cutting too much call me on it and you know I'll start just adding the content and not worrying about what YouTube thinks um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to set the points and as I watch the videos I, I mentioned uh, a couple of other things the air intake and, and things like that um, so what we'll do at the end of this, because this isn't going to take very long, um, I'll just kind of run through those other things that I mentioned that, but I never really showed uh, on the video. All right. So Dan, think logical. Thanks for keeping me honest, and uh, let's go ahead and go set these points. All right. Let's take a quick look at this turbulator adjustment, as the manual calls it, uh, while we have the unit out. Okay. So you've got an adjustment here. You can uh, loosen this nut and wind this screw, and you shouldn't have to do this, you know, each time. Once it's set, it's set. And if you have your manual, you can certainly verify what the uh, adjustment should be, okay? Now, I can tell you when this boiler was first installed, it was set to zero. But in, uh, with all due respect, it's somewhat misleading because the first and last marks are not really part of the indicator scale. So the manual even states that uh, one, in this case, is the second mark. So it's a little bit misleading. I don't know why they've done it that way, but if we were to release this nut and back this up all the way, uh, we would be at the first mark, which in this case is zero. So at any rate, that is something that you shouldn't have to monkey with, but I just thought it was worth mentioning while I had the unit out of the uh, boiler, okay? So, uh, so what we're going to do is you have to basically make sure that you have the correct gap here between the electrodes. Uh, they're also centered against the nozzle and also the correct distance out from the nozzle, which is not very much. On this one, I think it's two millimeters. All right, so I'll try to show you how to adjust these real quick. Um, it's going to be tough to get the, the actual measurement and everything on camera. That's why I wanted to show you the measurement when the uh, electrodes were off from the turbulator. Uh, I'm going to use a 15, 64 inch wrench. You could certainly use an adjustable. I'm just going to go counterclockwise with it, like a, or most fasteners, I should say. And what that does is it releases this electrode so that you can now spin it. Okay, so if we were to release both of them, uh, you have the ability to not only adjust the uh, gap between them, but you also have the ability to uh, center them, right? Because they're both angled. See, this is why it's difficult to get. They're both angled, and if they were both loose, we'd be able to pick the center. Now, we know that this was centered uh, when I started, so if I loosen this one, we'd have to find the center and, and adjust both. At this point, all I really need to do is set my four millimeters um, by adjusting this one just because I've loosened it up okay so what you do is you take your measurement let's see if I can get uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera as part of the problem uh, all right we'll try this angle here and see if we can get anything on camera so basically what I've done is I've made it so that they're this one's not moving as freely so I've got some tension on it I've tightened it down a little bit in other words and I'm just using my fingers to try to dial that into the four millimeter mark and also trying to get it on camera Okay, but you get the idea. Um, once you get it dialed into where you want it, and again, I've got it, I've got it uh, sort of moderately uh, tensioned, but I can still move it, um, and that's so that when you release it, it's not going to just flop out of the way, right? So I'm going to say that is good right there uh, at four millimeters. So what we'll do now is I'm just going to hold on to that electrode real quick, and we're going to tighten it down making sure that it doesn't move okay and we'll take another uh, measurement to make sure that it didn't 
Okay, I don't know if you guys can even see that. All right, so that's how you set uh, that gap on those points. Okay, now this uh, has a little bit of slide adjustment, as you can see. Um, and we can just loosen that up. I tightened it up just to get it adjusted, uh, the gap. Uh, now we need to be, according to my manual, two to two and a half uh, millimeters away from the nozzle. Okay, so again, I'll try to get it on camera. Um, but I may not be able to actually show you, right? So the two millimeter mark is basically the first two uh, notches there. And we'll see if we can push it out. All right, so let's take a quick look here. Um, basically, I went through and fine-tuned it because there was no way I was going to get that um, all of these fine measurements on the camera. Sorry, Dan, I did try. Okay, so we're looking for four millimeters between the two points, okay? Uh, and again, we're looking at uh, basically the inside of the points, not the outside of the points. We're looking at the gap between the material, okay? I think we're right there. Then we're looking at two to two and a half millimeters out to the electrode. This is according to the Riello manual. Again, you'll want to get your manual. Um, to verify that it's similar or the same, all right? Um, and again, we have this other adjustment here that you shouldn't have to monkey with, uh, which essentially adjusts the um, insertion depth of the nozzle to the burn chamber, all right? So, all right, and the final measurement we want here is uh, five millimeters between the center of the nozzle and sort of the virtual line that spans the two electrodes okay I should mention that these electrodes I'll probably replace them next year they have worn quite a bit um, and the other thing I want to mention if you're just watch, tuning into this video and you want to see how to remove this assembly and reinstall it that's in the nozzle replacement uh, video that's why I call this an addendum to that video okay I'm gonna go get this thing installed we'll take a look at a couple of other things on the burner that I've mentioned but did not show all right Alright, so I mentioned the air intake in a previous video and I said I'd show it, uh, but I didn't. So this plate here can be adjusted on this burner. Essentially this allows uh, more or less air to be pulled into the burner. Let's go ahead and kick it on here real quick. And basically when the burner is off, it's in a closed position. in this video series yet unless I had the proper tools would be the pump pressure and I mentioned that when we did the pump screen okay and we should also uh, check the flue gases which I don't have a tool for and also they commonly would uh, test the uh, the stack temperature right um, and when they do that this this housing should be on um, but hopefully uh, that fills that gap in I appreciate you leaving me the comment, and certainly uh, if there are other things, you know, put them in the comments below and I'll try to address them. Again, give me that thumbs up if you uh, found it helpful, and hit that subscribe button because that's real helpful to me. And I do have uh, a boiler cleaning video coming up, uh, so stay tuned, and that'll probably be the last one in the series.